Hello everyone, this is James Budinger again. Um, uh, with another home re repair video for everyone. In this video I'll be remodeling a laundry room. And in this picture right here you'll see me where an old door used to be right here. And it, there was some tarp over the top of it. I'm on the ladder taking the tarp off. And then in the next picture slide, you'll see me with a couple ladders putting up some new metal siding to cover up where this old door opening used to be. And they had that tarp just taped to the side of the house there. And then, when we come up to the next picture slide, you'll see a different angle of me on the ladders putting up the new metal siding to cover up where that old door opening used to be. Instead of having that tarp up there. And right behind this leads right to the laundry room the model is going to be taking place. <laughs> and here's another picture of it uh, finished. There used to be a door and a porch light, so that little piece of side on the right is where I covered up the hole and the slice in the siding where the porch light used to be. And I also installed a new oven vent up there on the left side. Now this is all screwed together and caulked and ready to go. And here's me. That way back behind me there is the laundry room. This is part of the kitchen. And there's this old shelf. Right here you can see me taking apart. I had a couple of cabinets in there. We're just going to be getting rid of that. And eventually I'll be working on the kitchen too, but for now we're just working on the laundry room. This is more of a before picture right here. Here's a close-up of that shelf that I took apart. Uh, I used to have a couple cabinet doors and stuff and shelving, but I had taken that already before this picture. Then in the next picture slide, we'll get into the tearing out of the walls behind that shelf. That's where the oven vent is. There had been some water damage near where that old door was. That's no longer there. So the insulation of that work fell down. And you may be seeing in the next couple slides where the floor has been damaged. And we'll be repairing that. And here's a close up of the top there. I had taken the wall panel off. And to the left there, that's that boarded up where the old door used to be. Then coming up in the next slide here a close-up of the floor and, and that's the way the insulation was right in the wall and I took the wall panel off what they had for wall panel over here was the original paneling over the top of the 2x4 studs and then they had covered that up with gypsum and nailed it on but that was just a, a cover up all this damage as you can see right there the floor it was water damaged which in turn ruined part of the rim joist the sole plate the floor the subfloor the bottom of the studs and uh, 
one by two that went around that the siding attaches to that goes on to two by four stores. And right here where you see the oven vent I put in there and it's new. There's supposed to be a stud on the other side of that oven vent, which you know the oven the old oven vent had a leak in it and it must have been years where it was leaking down into that stud and it just watered caused so much water damage it eroded away the whole stud and then it moved on to the floor. And then in this image you, there was a whole bunch of vinyl tile that was in this laundry room that I'm pulling up with a putty knife and a little hammer just to pick them all up and that's all throughout the kitchen as well. I'll have to remove that to install any new flooring first and see what's underneath of it too of course. And then another slide here. I have my little chair over there and it's a couple of my extension cords and my broom and just kind of cleaning up the area and taking the wall panels out and the old nasty insulation and I took the, the boarding off of where that door was, boarded up, pulled all that off and took it out. Is preparing the area to get ready to be prepared. There's me tearing off more of the wall panel. Like I said, they had the panel, original paneling on the 2 by 4s and then they had covered that up with gypsum. There's more of that vinyl tile in this laundry room that I had to pull up. This one with the new flooring going to be installed later. And coming up in this next slide, I put up a 2x4 support wall in front of this uh, exterior wall here because of how damaged the 2x4s were and everything. I, I wouldn't be able to take down this exterior wall without the roof sagging and the floor moving on me. So I built that temporary support wall so I could repair the damage to the floor. And the joists and two by fours and, and everything, which is coming up in this picture where I cut open a hole in the floor to access the joists and the rim joists where it has severe water damage. So, coming up in the next slide, we'll see where I have cut this away so that it can be repaired with new wood and the rim joist and sister the floor joist. Okay, you can see right here I cut it away to good wood and the rim joist and the floor joist. That was a pretty big section there. It wasn't any good due to the water damage. I had to pull up all the solar plate what was left of it anyway and cut out the floor to get to this point. And then here's the, the repair. I sistered the floor joist with the extra 2x4 support on one side. And I used two gusset plates of wood to patch in a new piece of rim joist on both sides all uh, level and ready to go and that support wall I put up really helps to keep everything in place while I do this. And here's a piece of new subfloor I had cut cut out on the and then installed down onto the floor after the repair of the rim joist. My sister the joist is finished. still have to do the sole plate and put the 2x4 studs back in this area but that will be coming up. And here I have installed a new piece of sole plate and I have repaired the 1x2 that the, uh, the siding attaches to behind the 2x4s and I framed in the oven vent with new wood and repaired the bottom of the 2x4s 
and reinstalled the two by four studs back into the exterior wall and nailed everything together. And here's further down underneath where that old door used to be, you can see where the color difference in the siding is. This part of the rim joist is bad too, and then the ends of the joists are rotted away. So I have to cut off the ends of the joists and sister them and put in a, I believe it was a four foot section of rim joist to repair this area over here after I cut off the floor. Unfortunately, I had forgotten to take a picture of that repair of the joist, but you get the general idea from my previous picture. Here I have installed a new sole plate and reinstalled the 2x4 studs, and I had cut a piece of subfloor to reinstall back on top of all of it. So this area is repaired and ready to go. There's another uh, vertical picture of this area with the studs installed, as you can see. It's coming up, I'll be getting to the corner of where the electrical and the water supply is for the washing machine. I will be repairing the floor over there. Right here I have cut out uh, the subfloor and I put down a moisture barrier on top of the joist. I had done that in all the previous ones as well. This, this one I just took a picture of it. It's where the washing machine drain is, the washing machine water supplies are, and eventually the electric will be run to this area in the wall. This is where I have repaired the joist, and the joist is ready to go. And here's a new cut piece of subfloor I installed in this area. With uh, the sole plate and the repaired 2x4 studs reinstalled back into the wall. And I also repaired the non-load-bearing wall inside this closet here with plywood vessel plates. And I'll be moving those electrical outlets out of the way to the proper positions later. And then this uh, washing machine supply and drain hookup for the water, I just built that out of plywood and framed that into the non load bearing wall just to have a place to hook up the cold hot water and then uh, to drain into the drain pipe for the washing machine all framed up and repaired with the sole plate and gusset plates of the 2x4s in this non-load bearing wall and here's a back back vertical picture of the area with all the 2x4s reinstalled onto the exterior wall and the flooring with the washing machine box and supplies and drain Coming up in the next video, I'll be replacing the flooring in this little hallway walk area. Uh, whoever had replaced the flooring in this area before used too thick of a piece of subfloor. So there was a ginormous you know, unevenness in this whole area. There was supposed to be 5 eighths and they used 7 eighths. So there was this hump. I wouldn't have been able to install any kind of final sheet flooring whatsoever, that severe amount of hump. And here's all of the subfloor pieces reinstalled in this laundry room, all level and even to each other, so that we can install our vinyl sheet flooring later on that you'll be seeing in the next video in this series and here's where I have wood, put in wood filler in all the, the little expansion gaps around the subfloor I installed in the pieces just to even it out and sand it down just get rid of any gaps, air gaps or anything coming up through and level it out smooth it out for our vinyl sheet flooring 
and I was unable to record a lot of this due to various reasons because I did not have my camera tripod stand yet but I have recorded all of the installation of the rest of the video where I'm doing insulation and wall panels and painting everything and installing vinyl sheet flooring and you all get to see me do that so thank